It was going to take a few days for Black Hole to meet up with the other ship. It was another destroyer, named the Meteor. Sisveta let Mira know that her ship would need to be able to travel. She would need to be able to pilot her ship from the bay it was in, move out away from Black Hole, and then the Meteor would pull her ship into itself with its own tractor beam. I believe you were working on your ship when we came across you. Is it flight-worthy? No. At least one of the thrusters is damaged, and I need to respond to my commander. She replied, I'll have Zanatla come by in the morning to help you work on your ship. You would be able to return a message as well. Have you decided how you want to broach the subject of alien life to your people? I have. I think that I don't want them to know until we are hailing for a place to sit down. Captain, humans tend to think the worst when they get left with their thoughts for too long. We call it an echo chamber. It will take us a few days to meet up with the meteor, and then several more days to reach Earth, I assume. That's a potential week to panic, and a potential week for the Imperia to make their move. I think that to give them that time would be a mistake. Sisveta was happy that Mira had made the decision to wait. He was also worried that the Imperia would intercept her transmission and make the first move. Humans were not a part of the Federation, so he could not interfere with her decisions. He could offer advice if asked, but could not offer it simply because he wanted to. The next morning, Zanatla picked Mira up for breakfast and then headed to the docking bay. Mira knew that this was to give her someone to ask questions as much as for them to keep track of the alien. No alien would have been allowed to wander free on a military ship back home, so she didn't take offense. Back on board her ship, Mira grabbed the parts bag she had been using to fix the thruster, added a few more parts to it from the supply closet, and grabbed her tool bag. Do you use ladders, platforms, or something else to get to high places to repair things? Mira asked. Zanatla grinned. Something much better. She guided Mira out of the ship and then showed her the buttons to press on her belt. You forget that our belts also control our personal gravities. Zanatla began to float. She then used her hands and feet against the ship to push herself into position near the damaged thruster. Mira pressed the buttons as she was shown and felt that zero-gravity effect. She maneuvered herself as Zanatla had done so that she didn't float past the thruster. Here, I'll be your anchor, Zanatla offered. She undid a small piece from her belt and attached it to a spot on Mira's belt. She suddenly felt like Batman with his utility belt. It took a few hours to make the repair. Had Mira been doing it alone, she would have been done much faster. But having someone to talk to like this did not lend itself to efficiency. It wasn't like Mira had anywhere to go, so taking longer to do the repair didn't bother her. Once finished, they used the ship to crawl back down closer to the floor, and Zanatla showed her how to go back to her own gravity and drop down to the bay floor. Mira envied Zanatla her tail. It clearly helped the skeet with balance. Once inside the ship, Mira ran another system scan. Everything came back clear. I should be good. You should still do a test hover, as well as a movement check. This bay is large enough and your craft small enough that it could be done. I will go inform the captain of the test. Before Mira could say anything, she was gone. It was only a few minutes before she returned. Captain S's Veta has given his permission. He would have been notified of such movements, and it is not good to make your captain worry. Right, right. Mira turned to the controls and contemplated them. Technically, she could fly this ship. Technically, a 12-year-old can drive a car. It's just not in your best interest to be anywhere near them if they do. You haven't piloted this before, have you? No. I've seen it done, and if we were out in space, I wouldn't be worried. Mira replied. Then it is good you have me. I have test-piloted many smaller vessels such as this after repairs. You will need to translate the words on the controls, but I don't see this as being too difficult. Her tail seemed to wave in what Mira translated as excitement. As she set the ship up to power up, she explained what she was doing. This part Mira understood but it was still nice to hear it from another perspective. Zanatla had the craft lift to hover, had it turn, moved it forward, 
had it turn the opposite way, and then move back to the spot it had been in. She then tried a reverse, moved it back to the starting position, and then set it back down. The control felt a little clunky to me. Did it feel normal to you? Yeah, it felt normal. Thanks for showing me. I'll need to be able to move this out of the docking bay and into space, and I'd like to not cause damage while doing that. I can set you up with a simulator. Creating the program won't be that difficult. I would be able to utilize parts of simulation programs already available, and then just match the controls to what is here. You would just need to ensure you add your written language to the translator, so you will see your words instead of my words on the screen. They moved back towards the main screen for the docking bay, and Zanatla sent a message to the captain that the testing was complete. I'd really appreciate that. I still need to send a message back to my commander. May I watch? I don't plan on saying anything that would be secret. As long as you stay out of the camera view, we should be fine. Once they were back in the ship, Mira pulled out a cart and began loading it with everything from the supply closet and then dropping it off at the control room, arraying like items with each other. It only took two trips, the last containing being a mostly depleted spool of wire. Had she run out of that wire, she would have likely died as well. She had wanted more items for the supply closet, but had been denied due to weight and space available. As she was doing this, Zanatla could only understand a few words here and there. She was pretty sure Mira had switched to another language at some point. There was no way that at this point there would be that much of her language that hadn't been translated. That stupid son of a bitch thinks he has any clue what I can and can't do with this pile of shit? He needs to take his head out of his ass real quick. After that, Mira visibly calmed. It was rather frightening to see and scent her anger so strongly, and then have it all disappear in a moment. She scented the air again. Now it just scented of authority and calm, but not a normal calm. Mira took another deep breath and then directed Zanetla on where to stand. Once Mira's attention was to the controls, she pressed a button on her jacket that would record the exchange. Sisveta would be interested to know what was said. Good morning, Commander Morris. You required a detailed accounting of my actions, and it took a little while to ensure I was giving you all the information you would require. She tapped a few buttons, and there was a new screen in front of her, instead of seeing Mira reflected in the viewer. As you can see from this ship schematic, these markings here are the ventilation systems. These are where the wiring is for system controls. This is the wiring for auxiliary power, and this is the wiring for the life support systems. I suspect this part of the ship is where you would think I could change into a refrigeration room, however, due to this system here. She marked a part of the ventilation system. That would be impossible to do without a hull breach. This would tax the life support system, and even returning immediately would not ensure I could return home. You likely are now thinking that I should have been able to fabricate a way to do this. She changed back to the camera mode instead of the presenting mode. Here is everything that was left after my necessary repairs were made. You also have a list of all replacement and repair parts that were in the ship's supply closet. With your master's degree in thermodynamics and minor in material science from the United States Merchant Marine Academy, as well as your certifications as a certified systems engineering professional and a master's certified electronics technician, Please explain to me in great detail on how you would use these parts to fabricate the necessary systems to turn any room into this ship into a space cold enough to stop decomposition without also putting undue strain on the rest of the ship. In addition, I would also like to know why it was that we have the location and trajectory of every piece of space rock larger than a basketball from Earth to Alpha Centauri, yet did not have that asteroid field mapped out, because I have a few choice words to say to them. I would like to report that I have completely replaced the life support systems due to an electrical shortage that fried every single life support wire and panel relay, as well as replaced the necessary parts in the port thruster. The ship is back to normal handling. Chief Machinist Mate Mira Rodriguez out. She ended the recording and breathed out a sigh of relief before turning back to the parts and loading them all back up and getting them into place in the supply closet. As she cleaned up, 
Zanatla turned off the recorder and moved out of the place she had been directed to. He doesn't have those credentials, does he? Mira chuckled. No, his credentials would be in a very different field. I can't remember what they are at the moment, but I do know it wasn't in engineering. Soon enough, everything was packed up. He'll probably send for a disciplinary action on my return, but then he would also have to hand over the recording to prove it. My commanding officer and his superior both like me too much to do it blindly, considering they are both vastly more experienced than I am. It's possible they might have thought of something I didn't, but to be able to do it under duress and in the moment would be extremely unlikely. The additional parts I had requested would have probably been able to do it, though. It was my commanding officer that helped me to come up with the list in the first place. He was also unhappy. The additional parts had been denied. They called him paranoid, and he called them short-sighted. I hear it was a beautiful argument. Zanetla chuckled. She also understood how different departments might not fully appreciate the more technical departments like hers until she came up with a miracle when it was suddenly needed. Captain Esses Veda was a good captain, and Zanetla was thankful each year she was able to serve with him again. The next day, the simulator was ready, so Zanetla brought Mira to her own room in the ship. This room looked much more lived in. There was what looked like a glass-topped desk that faced the main screen. This is where she directed Mira to sit. Zanetla adjusted the desk, and Mira saw that it was a giant digital keyboard which soon took on images that looked much like the control panel of her ship. When she looked up, the main screen looked like it was in a bay. This is amazing. You did this in one night? It wasn't that hard. Many systems were already created. I only had to make some minor adjustments. Mira knew when someone was downplaying what they accomplished. Take the praise. You deserve it. Zanetla was flustered and quickly began to go over the controls. After a few hours, Zanetla declared Mira to be a natural. Thank you for being such a good teacher. I don't want to have to repair anything you may break. She chuckled and Mira joined in. It was an uneventful day and a half before Black Hole met up with the meteor. The evening before, Sisveta had gone over the species names of the crew she would be going to, as well as the names and ranks of some of the people she would likely be working closely with. They were getting ready for the transfer when Sis Veda asked, How is your echo chamber? He tapped his head. Mira smiled. It's been pretty quiet. Thank you for assigning Zanetla to be my babysitter. Her company helped to keep out the worry. Was it so obvious? It only made sense to have someone always in the company of the alien on a military vessel. It would have been the same if our roles had been reversed and you were the stranded alien in our system. I hope I didn't keep her away from any needful tasks. You didn't. Feel free to contact either of us. I had Zanetla set us both up as contacts as well as Clarud. You may feel more comfortable to speak to someone you have been around longer, or you may have questions that you worry will cause offence. If you continue to add your written language, you will be able to send written messages instead of video calls if you wish it. I wish good fortunes to you. Thank you. Mira took a breath and headed to her ship. She was given a signal to start up the ship, and once she was hovering, the bay doors were opened. She headed forward, cleared the doorway, and headed deeper into space. After she was about 200 yards out, she saw the other destroyer some ways away still. She headed in that direction, and after another 400 yards or so, the light of a tractor beam enveloped her ship. She took her hands off the controls and let the meteor haul her in and set her down, once sat down, she turned off the engine, gathered her things, and headed to the exit. Sisveda had told her to open the door and then wait for the crew to come to her for her safety. She opened the door and waited at the threshold. Hey everyone, hope you loved the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more awesome sci-fi content. And if you're feeling generous, check out our Ko-Fi page to support the channel. Every bit helps us bring you more stories from the stars. Thanks a bunch.